Hi everybody, Adam Steele, Reaper Guy here, and today I'm going to be talking about something that's quite specific, but would really help for any engineer who is working with a band, you've worked on an album or an EP, and you've got all those little, you know, fades between songs and everything, and they've asked you to deliver a DDP master. What is that? Why do the mastering houses need it? And how can we make one straight from Reaper with no extra software involved? I'm going to walk you through exactly how you do that right now. But before I do, I'm going to tell you about our sponsor, which is us, which is the Pro Mix Academy Ultimate Guide to Reaper. This is an extension to that guide that I'll try and include, but the Reaper guide takes you right from the very beginning, making sure that you can get Reaper up and running, all the way walking you through electronic production, uh, band production, mixing, getting to know all the inbuilt effects, how to use external effects, all the way through to the final saving and output. But this is a really specific version of the video that we're going to do today, which is DDP. So without further ado, let's make a project for DDP and we'll get some tracks in there and show you exactly what it is, why it is and how to use it. So the dreaded DDP, the file that you send off to the CD pressing plant where they make the glass master. So it's the kind of thing where you want to make sure it's right, but it's kind of a weird format. So we're going to check out things now. First thing that I would highly suggest is that you go to this link. I googled the, the term Reaper DDP project and there is a person, Alex Hayes, who made this really useful template. And so on the GitHub page here, there is a download zip button at the top right and you can get a very tiny Reaper project. It's like two kilobytes or something but it really, really helps. And so what we want to do is open that up and it will come up with this. It's not the most glorious of things, but you want one single track, ideally. And it's called DDP. So, I mean, you can have more than one track in a DDP project, but it all will be bounced down to a stereo thing so you might well want a second track so you can do cross fades and all that kind of thing but that's down to you what i would again highly recommend for ddp is open up your reaper settings and change your sample rate to 44.1 kilohertz no more no less because ddps are specifically for cd release and cd red book standard is 44.1 kilohertz 16 bit that is the standard that is all you're going to get you have no other choice that's what ddp is so when you open it up it's got some markers in it and the markers are incredibly useful now this is something that you can do uh, for uploading releases to, you know, Spotify, iTunes, all that kind of stuff with ISRC codes, international standard recording. Each song should really have its own ISRC code. Now, a lot of places don't actually kind of bake that all into the CD. Um, it's good when they do. When you're making a DDP, your image is what is going on that disc. So any, any kind of details you want to add, now is a really good time to do it. If there's like CD text available on a, a CD player, then it'll show some really cool stuff like titles of tracks, that kind of thing. If you put the CD into a drive for someone like you, your grandpa to rip it, it, it will come up with decent details. But what we need to do is adhere to some very specific standards. First one being marker one has an exclamation point there. That is what we call track zero. That's where the CD begins and you have to have a two second gap right here and the audio for your first track is going to go in after marker two. So at this point I'm just going to pull in a track. I'm going to pull in something that I've worked on because you know this is just an example. Okay so here's a track that I worked on a long time ago and it's got a little bit of a a little bit of a, a kind of intro but it has to go after the start of marker two because the way that cds work that gap at the start here is actually where all the info goes that the cd player reads about 
what the track numbers are, table of contents, all that kind of stuff. And so the Red Book Audio Standard wouldn't play anything there anyway. And I would also highly recommend that no real important audio information uh, came in before about half a second after your marker. So in that case, I'm going to pull in the start of this track and just fade it in. A lot of CD players kind of miss the first little bit of audio when you hit play. It's, it's not ideal, it's a bug, but it's something that a lot of CD players have always done. So you, the best advice is have kind of half a second of quiet or silence or unimportant audio at the start of a track so that, say, the first beat of a drum or whatever it is doesn't get missed when you hit play. So when that's in, and you can see that this is a 44K file and it goes really loud at the end and that's all pretty standard. Uh, so I'm going to open up this marker and edit it. So where it says hashtag first track title, that's going to be a serenade. And the performer in this case is, if I just put that in APY, and you can see that in between each one of these attributes is a pipe. And you need to leave that in. That's not letter I, that's a pipe. And that is a thing that uh, separates the values so that when the DDP is made, it can be read. And of course, you've got your ISRC value, which I'm just going to put um, some number in. If this had been submitted and I had all the uh, details from the you know, recording uh, people uh, for, for us in the UK, it's the Performing Rights Society, PRS. In the US, it's something else, but you get the ISRC codes and you put them in there. And then that is it. We get the next track and we drag the marker in. We can make more markers with the M button and then just copy all the text out of one of the other tracks and paste it in and just call it you know, third track title, whatever it may be. And just make sure that's all in there. Absolutely fine. And make sure then that the end is done properly. Now let's say that we actually are doing like a concept album and the tracks are going to overlap each other. We've got a couple of choices here. Either I can insert a new track, uh, a new song on the same track and crossfade them, or I can add it on another track underneath and just let them play. Um, you've got to be careful that you don't produce any clips if you do it that way. So I'm going to make a second track underneath and I'm going to hit insert and find another track to add in. There we go. So I've got another track by Banana Ranch. And again, just for argument's sake, let's say that this fades in over the top of the previous track. Where the marker goes determines when you skip the CD to where it starts playing that bit. So if you've got a crossover, the CD marker then yeah, determines where one track stops and one track starts. Uh, technically, it doesn't conform to audio Redbook standards if there's not a two second pre gap here, but nobody's used those in a long time, generally speaking. It's not that big of a deal. That was something that in the mid 80s I think was thought to be appropriate because vinyl had like, you know, four or five second gaps and then CDs they thought they should do that. But then when concept albums came around, how do you have the audio streaming continuously? And so you would do this. And so you make sure that all your tracks are done. And then when you finished, there is another marker at the end, which has to go somewhere. And that has all the details of like at album, performer, the genre, the genre, there is a specific list of genres. You can't just put in what you want, but you just add the details in here and make sure that that's all in and on your project properly. At that point, you can then go to file and render and you can change your format to be DDP and then it will have a DDP folder. Usually the name is image.dat. So you make the folder and name the folder that it's in appropriately. And then in there you'll have DDP and then image.dat. And so that will be bounds entire project. And that is you done. You hit export. And when you finished, it will come out with something. Render one file. Now, in this case, our third uh, track there is going to be blank because we didn't add anything in. If you're making an album with, say, like bonus tracks or gap tracks, that's an easy way to do it. And then that 
should add all the details in. Now to check it, we're going to go back to our Chrome window here and we're going to go to this website, DDP Mastering Tools. Because what you can do is you can download a version of the Mastering Tools. I'm going to download the Windows version here. From here, there is an, a little program called DDP Info. So I'm going to unzip this to my desktop. And it's, it's very, very basic stuff. This also runs on Linux or Mac OS. But this is a tool that lets me do these kind of things. Now, if I say open in terminal, that will give me a, a PowerShell, which is kind of like a DOS box. And I can type, uh, I can get that DDP file that I just made. Where did that go? And as it says on the first uh, website that we went to, the one, the GitHub from Alex Hayes, there is uh, DDP info which you don't need the .exe, dash dash verify, and then the folder, which for us is dot slash DDP. Ah, so this is Windows PowerShell, so I've just got to do a dot slash DDP info. There we go. And that is now checking everything. It says, okay, 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 okay. Which means that that is good to go. Uh, there are other uh, apps you can use to open DDP files to check them and play them back. Uh, you can just do a quick Google if you're really double, triple wanted to check everything is fine. But that proves that everything is at least file wise correct. You can actually make a DDP image by using some of the things in this uh, DDP tools folder, but it's much less user intuitive. You don't get to do things like exactly putting the markers where you want them, crossing the files over that kind of stuff, which you can do in Reaper. So uh, doing it in Reaper is, is the, the most you know affordable, easy, intuitive way of doing it. And so that's what I highly recommend. I haven't done a DDP image in a while, but when I did, Reaper was the last thing that I used. So if you're still making CDs for people and they are popular in a lot of uh, a lot of audiences, then this is a nice way to do it with all that funky like cross fading and all that kind of stuff involved. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this useful and enjoyable. Uh, I know it's been a bit of a nerdy one, but uh, if you are interested in working more in Reaper, check out the Ultimate Reaper Production Series Guide thing, which is available in the link in the description below from Pro Mix Academy. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.